Hello everyone, we're standing underneath the southeast tower of the Tyne Bridge, or should I say the new Tyne Bridge. We'll come back to that later. Why and what are we doing here? Keep watching to find out. On the 6th of October 1854, that's 74 years before the actual this Tyne Bridge was built, on this very spot I'm standing was a new mills premises of Mr. J. Wilson and Sons Worsted Factory That's weed cloth to me and you It was a large gas light lit factory Adjoining the building was a large seven storey stone and timber warehouse that belonged to Mr. Bertram and Mr. Spencer and it was used for storing goods That night it contained sulfur, manganese, nitrate of silver, as well as other combustible material. And just after midnight, Police Constable John Hewitt saw flames coming from the upper window. So he made his way across the old Tyne Bridge, which was situated roughly where the swing bridge is now. And it was a stone low arch bridge built in 1781. I digress. John ran across the bridge to raise the alarm and horse-drawn fire engines raced down to the scene to fight the fire and were assisted by soldiers from a nearby barracks. They fought strenuously to kill the flames but had little effect and the fire raged out of control. Locals had heard about the fire and were making their way down to see. They were queuing on the Newcastle side of the river. They were even standing on the high level bridge to get a better view. Thinking that they were well out of danger. At just about three o'clock, popping sounds were heard coming from Bertram's factory. But they were ignored. You might want to cover your ears at this bit. Moments later, Bertram's factory blasted apart with the force of an erupting volcano. Spewing masonry, flaming barrels, burning timber and other objects into the air cascading into the air and falling on the people and properties causing dreadful consequences the shock from the blast was felt as far in in the north as Annick in the west as Hexham and as far east as Sunland in the aftermath of the explosion there was an eerie silence before all hell breaks loose with a screaming and a wailing as the enormity of the situation became apparent. In Hellgate, the firemen, policemen and volunteers being at the heart of the explosion must have died instantly before being buried by tons of rubble collapsing down on top of them. Most of the buildings on the Newcastle Quayside were destroyed and the tenements behind were burnt to the ground trapping occupants within. The building in front is Betsy Surtees house and it was one of the only buildings that wasn't destroyed or damaged in the fire. The fire was still raging as daylight broke and the enormity of the scene was a lot to take in. A crater 30 foot deep and 50 foot across scored the roadside where Bertram's factory used to be. There used to be a floating nightclub called the Tuxedo Princess and one night security guards on the Princess looked out the window and seen a person running in flames they grabbed fire extinguishers, went outside to look for him, but he had disappeared. 53 people died in the fire that night and hundreds were injured. The plaque to commemorate the fire is situated on the southeast tower of the Tyne Bridge, roughly the spot where it started. If you're interested in the contents of this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.